Shalom, shalom, peace and blessings. Now let's get straight to it. Today's lesson is this is life or death. Because it really is. This word, you know, it brings about life or death either here today in the flesh or in the spirit or in a, in a second death or in the world to come. So that's what I want to get into today. Um, you know, scriptures are meant to be a reproof and instruction on, on everyday life, all of our minor and major decisions, how you conduct yourself at your job, you know, your business, um, how you conduct yourself with your woman, or if it applies to the woman, to, to your man, so on and so forth. Um, but it's also how to obtain eternal life, as we know, uh, at least if you are the children of Israel, because if not, um, this book is just to teach you how to be the best slave. But anyway, um, you know, our decision of the following the commandments are not can result in life or death. All right. So let, let's talk about it. Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 15. Uh, this is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 15. And it reads, see, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. Okay, so this is Moses, all right, uh, basically telling the people, um, you know, this day, he's telling our, you know, our people how to choose life or death. I mean, uh, life and good or death and evil. Let's keep going. Verse 16, and that I command thee this day to love the most high, thy power, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou may have live and multiply and the Lord thy power shall bless thee in the land whether thou goest to possess it. So you see, now Moses was, you know, they the children of Israel were right outside of the land, of the land of Israel at this time. I believe in the land of Moab, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so this was in reference to at the time being into the land of Israel, all right? Um, the Lord thy power, Yahweh shall bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess it. But now this is referring to the kingdom. So this is all double fold, all right? And the way to achieve that is by keeping the statute, laws, and commandments, and its judgments, so we will multiply and live. But let's keep going. Verse 17, but if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. Keep on. And denounce unto this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou passeth over Jordan to go to possess it. You see, that judgment was brought upon our people, you know, immediately at this time. But right now, we don't have any um, priests to bring upon that judgment, okay? We don't have that set up right now. So, you know, if you're an idolater, you may or may not at least appear, you know, in the flesh to be judged at that time, at least being put to death. But it all still applies because in the second death, you, you still will. So it's all the same thing. But let's get verse 19. Verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Now you see that? I, I love that word here that the scribe used. It, therefore choose life because it's a choice. Okay, it's, it's choices that we make here today in the flesh that's going to determine whether we have life or death even here in the flesh or have life or death in the second life and the second death. Okay, so we need to choose life. All right, and in this lesson, we're gonna talk about how to choose life, but first, you know, I, I wanna talk about how to choose life in the flesh first. Ultimately, it's all about the, you know, the, the kingdom and the spirit. However, I wanna talk about how to choose life here in the flesh. Because it, it all it all ties in together, it all goes in together. 
Okay, and that's how we choose life in the kingdom by our actions and our choices today. Okay, let's get Ecclesiastes chapter seven and verse twelve. It's the book of Ecclesiastes chapter seven and verse twelve. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. So we know wisdom giveth life. Okay, wisdom is a defense. You know, money is a defense too. Okay, um, uh, sometimes a, a lot of brothers kind of don't want to touch on stuff like that, but it, it's true to a certain extent, and it's here in the scripture, so it's okay to acknowledge that. But to the point, though, I want to talk about wisdom. It says, "Wisdom giveth life to them that have it." So we need to talk about how to obtain wisdom. There, right? You know, how do we do that? One may say you know, by reading the scriptures, but I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say it's by just reading the scriptures. It's about, you know, you will obtain wisdom by applying the scriptures because anyone can read. You know, anyone can have a Bible in their house. Anyone that can actually read can pull up a Bible app on their phone, but it doesn't mean to actually do what the word says. Here is the words, and I do what's the words, right? So, the Most High's wisdom is in the scriptures. In order for us to choose life as Moses instructed, though, we, we have to apply the wisdom here, okay? And matter of fact, I pulled up the wisdom, the, uh, not the wisdom, so I can the definition of wisdom here really quickly. So it says, the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment, the quality of being wise. Now let's look at this, this second definition here. It says, the soundness of an action or decision with regard to the application of experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So it's the application of knowledge that makes one wise. And that's how you make wise choices, you know, on a daily basis is to apply what you've read in the scriptures. Okay. Again, on the workplace, business, family, friends, so on and so forth. And you know, understanding is when you know why you 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 doing what you're doing. All right, which also having understanding, you know, also invokes wise choices as well. Because you you know the reason behind what you're doing. But again, let's talk more about wisdom. Let's get Proverbs chapter four and verse four. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter four and verse four. He taught me also and said unto me. Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. And live. Choose life. Live. Okay? Let thine heart retain my words. You see, your, your heart has to retain these words. That's how you keep the commandments. It has to be in your heart or your mind. Now, let's get this real quick. The yeah, concordance or the, the definition of the word for heart. Let's see what it says, because the verse said, let thine heart retain my words. So let's, let's look at heart real quick. I think I pulled this up recently in a, another lesson, but it says here, inner man, mind, will, heart, understanding. So it has to be in your inner man. These words have to be in your inner man, in your spirit. It can't be just on the outside. You understand? It says inner man, miss. Heart, soul, mind, knowledge, thinking, reflection, memory. So again, it has to be in you. Now, um, you know, something that I'm gonna just share with y'all. Hopefully it's gonna take too long to, to kind of bring out here, but this is something you know I've thought of before. So while I was still in the world, I used to be a part of a so-called fraternity, uh, which is wicked, by the way. So don't join these things, fraternity or sororities. They all worship, worship pagan deities, whether they believe that and know or understand it. Uh, so don't do that. But, but anyway, I was a part of a, a fraternity. And, you know, while in this fraternity, you know, I, I really noticed something as I was in that fraternity for some time. I noticed that there would be guys that, um, well, okay, let me backtrack here. In the fraternity, you had different things that you had to do, like have meetings with the school. You had to have meetings within your so-called chapter 
to plan and prep out different events and things of that nature. But then I would see guys that would never do any of those things. But when it came to the partying, um, when it came to, you know, being in a club, you know, strolling it and different things like that, they were all for it. When it came for taking pictures and throwing up that Masonic hand symbol, they were all with that. Okay. But they never did any of the, the work, quote unquote work. Because again, I'm not promoting this. I'm not. Um, and if you are in one, you should flee it. I sincerely mean that. Um, but again, I'm just referring to you know, my understanding at that time. But you, you had people that was just all show. And we don't want to be like that in this walk. You know, when it comes to taking pictures, pulling up at the feast days, whatever, whatever the case is, we all in it. But you know, when it comes to it being in our inner man, in our everyday life, as soon as trials and tribulations happen, now, you know, you, you ain't with it like that. Now, <laughs> you know, you, you don't want to pull up the scriptures or you don't want to actually apply it. We don't want to be like that. That's a similitude that I see sometimes um, when, you know, money is involved, you know, brothers and sisters can switch up. When a woman or a man is involved, brothers and sisters can switch up. And, you know, I, I, I just see that. I've, I've observed that. And, um, you know, that happens when it's not in your inner man. When the words aren't in your inner man, that's what I'm getting at, brothers and sisters. When it's not in thine heart, that's exactly what will happen. You don't want to be just for show, okay? Because it can happen easily. All right, we're not exempt from that. You understand? We're not exempt from the words not being in our inner man. Just because you come to the knowledge, you understand you're you're an Israelite and you start keeping the statute laws and commandments, I don't mean that we can be complacent. Okay. Matter of fact, I want to get some more on Proverbs chapter four. Uh, let's get verse thirteen. It's the book of Proverbs chapter four and verse thirteen. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Wisdom is thy life. The application of knowledge is your life because, you know, this, this can be your life or death in this world too, making a wise choice or not. And this is something that we aren't exempt of either. You know, still running with some of the same people, even if you're watching the time, you know, Certain people still got to be cut off. It is what it is because you can be put in a, you know, in a compromised position very quickly. Okay, let's get uh, verse twenty-two and verse twenty-three. Verse twenty-two. But they are life unto those that find them, and help to all their flesh. Come, okay, verse twenty-three. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. That's the issues of life. That's how we choose life. Through wisdom. Okay. But it's not enough to know precepts. You know, we have to actually apply those. All right, let's get. And um, by the way, we, we're talking about how to choose life here in the flesh. Okay. So we can follow Moses' instructions for us. Now I want to talk about another way. All right, let's get Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. It's the book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Wow, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Man, the tongue has a world of iniquity. Uh, and this isn't just referring to so-called curse, curse words. You know, this means, you know what, matter of fact, I got I got James 4. I mean, uh, Salakia, so like verse, I mean, chapter 3 pulled up. So let's, before I go too much into it, let's start at verse 4 in James chapter 3. So, um, Bob Kasha. God's book of James, chapter 3 and verse 4. Behold also the ships, which, thou, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with every small helm. Whithersoever the governor listeneth. 
So you, you have a ship, a mighty ship, a huge ship that's controlled and steered by a small device, by that wheel, which is normally, you know, one thousandth time of, of the ship, especially if you, of course, I'm referring to at least a, a small to medium sized ship, but, um, you know, it's, it's controlled by a small helm, just like the tongue. Let's get verse five. Verse five, even so the tongue is a little member and boast of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Yeah, so it's a little member, it's a small part of all your other members, meaning, uh, you know, essentially the rest of your body is it's a small member, okay? But it boasts of great things. It has an immense power behind it. Let's get verse six. Verse six. And the tongue is a fire and world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and set it on fire of the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. Wow. Look how the tongue is described, man. Life or death. Okay. And we've all, at least let me speak for myself. I'm pretty sure, at least though, all of us have you know, offended others with our words. But it's something that you have to watch out for, and, you know, do your best at because, you know, just think about how many so-called black men and, and women are dead or in jail or prison or something like that, just because of words. We ain't talking even, you know, nothing crazy, or at least it, it got to something crazy based on just words, okay? Based on just words. Matter of fact, let's get something on that. Um, Proverbs 15 and 1. Yeah, let's get Proverbs 15 and 1. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 15 and verse 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. How many of our people would have been saved just by applying this precept? A soft answer turneth away wrath. If somebody talking to you crazy, of course... You know, as long as they're not threatening your life or anything like that, just a soft answer, you know, being a quote unquote bigger man could, could really be life or death for you or the other person, all right, or somebody else involved. Again, this is how you get jammed up, man. And again, we're not exempt from this. You know, more times than not, if you follow the statute of laws and commandments, you won't be around a certain amount of people, of course, but. You just never know when, you know, you can end up being lack, not paying attention, and then something can happen. Or you can be out on your, you know, doing your, your errands or so on and so forth, and something still can happen to you. All right. But a soft answer would turn away wrath more times than not. Just by this alone, if our people would apply this, man, we can get out of a lot of nonsense for real. All right, y'all want something else? Yeah, let's get uh, let's get verse eight real quick. Book of James, chapter three, and verse eight. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Man, that tongue, man, <laughs> it can get you in some stuff. What I'm telling you, and, you know, even when somebody is saying something to you, um, you know, you you still have to understand that, you know, what this member is capable of. And you can't react to it like that. Speaking of, let's get that. Um, man, I didn't put in this Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians 4. Let's get Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26. Baba Kasha. God, it's the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. You can become angry. It, it, is, it is almost impossible not to get angry at some point in time, even when you in this walk, but sin not. All right, a, a soft answer turn away wrath. Again, we, we talk about how to choose life here in the flesh. You know, all of these things, they could apply to us, you know, at one point in time. So it, it's important to go over these things, you know, 
A lot of times we say, keep the statute laws and commandments, which is beautiful. And we need to, to push that gospel on our people. But I like to get into the nuances as well, at least a little bit more of a nuance. So we'll be able to apply this when the time comes. Lord willing. Let's get verse 27. God, verse 27. Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. You, you can't put yourself in, in certain situations if you know, you know that the devil is there, man. Don't give place to the devil. Don't give him an opportunity to come in. And you know, the devil is just left-hand side uh, demon that, that puts you in trials and tribulations, okay, to really build up your testimony. He's our enemy, but not an enemy of the most high. Just in case you need to know. All right, let's get uh, Sirach chapter 37 and verse 18. The book of Sirach chapter 37 and verse 18. For manner of things appear, good and evil, life and death, but the tongue ruleth over them continually. Now, you notice that, you know, here, you don't see anything in between. It's just good and evil, life and death. Because that's, that's all it is when it comes down to it. Are you either choosing life or are you choosing death? No lukewarm, nothing like that. We already know that from Revelation, the third chapter. All right, but the tongue ruleth over them continually. All right, again, we're not exempt. Got to watch that tongue, man. You know, if you find yourself about to say something, you know, you, you, you might be going off. It's applies to me too. I'm saying you just in general. Um, you know, you, you got to flee from that thing, man, when it applies. All right. I had some similar happen to me that I had to apply to myself not too long ago. Let's get Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 6. Book of Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 6. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. So eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. So this is double fold. You literally don't want to eat bread um, or food of someone with an evil eye, but you know, also this could be in reference to knowledge. All right, you want to take on the doctrine, the knowledge, the understanding of anything that isn't this word. Okay, anything that doesn't involve the scriptures, you don't want to eat of that. All right, meaning consume it. I mean, take that on as an acceptable doctrine. That's what Eve did. And Eve taught it to, to Adam. That's what they did. It wasn't an actual fruit. Okay. And the word apple isn't there, just in case, you know, somebody watching that they didn't know the word apple is not there. It's just referring to doctrines. But the point is in, in uh, verse seven, though. Let's get that. Con, verse seven. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. I want to focus on this first part here. It says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Wow, so you, you are what you think about. You know, we're talking about the tongue, which is important for us to watch our tongue, okay, since we know what power that it has. But also, you know, we have to watch the words that we say within ourselves, within our own hearts. Okay. Cause you know, your brothers <laughs> may not understand what I'm saying here, but you know, you can put certain spells on your own self. And no, I'm not saying like, uh, you know, as a witch type of spell, anything like that. But all I'm saying is, is, you know, if you tell yourself certain things over and over, you're going to start to believe it because that voice inside of your head is what you hear the most out of, you know, anybody else. You're going to hear that the most. So you have to moderate those thoughts as well, okay? You know, if you keep telling yourself, I'm never going to do this or that, I'm never going to get better, I'm never going to understand the scriptures, you know, my past is causing me to do this and that, man, I ain't going to make the kingdom, I'm too wicked. You know, those type of things, man, you got to check your thoughts. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You understand? So let's get uh let's get the next verse. Let's get Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 3. The book of Proverbs, chapter 16 
in verse 3. Commit thy works unto the most high, and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit thy works into Yahweh, and thy thoughts shall be established. So, you know, based on the context of, of what we're talking about right now, what are the works? Now, we know we are to spread the gospel, like I said, the good news. That you, if you keep the statute, laws, and commandments, you have a chance at eternal life. That's the real gospel. Okay, if you're the children of Israel, uh, you have a chance at eternal life. That's the gospel. Um, and, you know, one can read that as, you know, commit thy works unto the Lord, as that being a work. But, you know, what the work is, what I see here is the work that you do on yourself that nobody else sees. Because at the end of the day, all you can control is yourself. All right. You know, we can get too caught up in, you know, trying to teach others, you know, they don't know that Israel yet. They don't know they have to keep the statute laws and commandments. But ultimately, when it comes down to it, all we can do is, you know, work on ourselves every single day. All right. Be the best man or woman that we possibly can be. And that's where, where it starts at. The more and really the more knowledge and wisdom that you obtain is the more that you can help others. You can't give if you don't have anything yourself. So that the real work in choosing life is the work that nobody else sees, you know, building up your own foundation. Okay, let's get Galatians chapter six and verse four. It's the book of Galatians chapter six and verse four. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he so like and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So you have to prove your own work. Let's get verse five. Verse five. For every man shall bear his own burden. So when it comes to judgment, you know, you're not gonna be judged on the crew that you ran with. Did you knew this brother? You talked to this brother before. Or you study with this brother. It's going to be all on what you do at the end of the day. You have to bear your own burdens. And you have to prove your own work. All right, getting to work on yourself upon the statute laws commandments. You know, purging your spirit of unclean spirits. You know, lust, lasciviousness, um, excessive pride, uh, so on and so forth. All the unclean spirits we, we already know about. Covetousness. All right. You got to work on ourselves. That's that's choosing life. All right. And that's building up wisdom and making wise choices. Because we read here in Ecclesiastes chapter seven that wisdom giveth light. All right. So this is how we, we choose life. Let's get second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse five. This book of second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse five. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Yahweh Shah Hamashiach is in you, except ye be reprobates. You gotta examine your own self, man. Whether you be in a faith. We're not exempt from that. Okay. We we can't get um you know prove oh okay, my bad. Examine yourselves, whether you be in a faith, prove your own selves. Man, we, we cannot get complacent in this thing, man. We just cannot get complacent because it can happen. It says prove your own selves. <laughs> you know, we can be talking about proving a friend, but, you know, really have you proven yourself. All right. You know, we, we throw around the scripture in Sirach chapter six, but, you know, especially when it comes in, in terms of courting, but, you know, we got to prove our own selves now. All right. How are you going to prove a friend if, if you haven't proven yourself? All right. And, and that's how you choose life. Because, again, the more that you have, the more wisdom and knowledge and understanding that you have, the more you be able to pour that out onto others. And really, you know, it, especially our people that, you know, don't know they, they're Israel and need to be waking up. They'll be able to see that something is, is different about your spirit, whether you even tell them or not. All right. I had that happen so many times, like from, from people I haven't even told or they haven't seen any of my lessons or anything like that. They can just see something that's different than what you used to be like in the world. And, you know, the good thing about that is 
once they have questions or something like that, you're going to be the first person they go to. Okay. So, you know, we, we can't get too caught up in the teaching aspect and we're not actually working on ourselves individually. Um, and, because one thing that can do too is have you not content in, in what you have. Let's get Sirach chapter 40 and verse 18. The book of Sirach chapter 40 and verse 18. To labor and to be content with that a man hath is a sweet life, but he that findeth a treasure is above them both. To labor and be content with what the man hath is, is a sweet life. You know, always content, never complacent. You know, at least that, that's my... You know, that's my perspective on how we should be in this word. Be content at all times because, you know, you, you could get in this thing, man. <laughs> you be wanting everything, man. You want the most beautiful, righteous wife in, in all of Israel. You want all the money in the world so you can spend 24-7 in the scriptures. You want wisdom like King Solomon. You want to be handsome like King David. You know, you but sometimes it'll work like that, at least you know, in the beginning, we have to work for things, all right? We have to be content with what we have. Um, if we have family and friends, we really want to get it, they don't get it. It's still our praise to the most high that we got it, that we understand. You know, we, we can't ask for too much in this thing because it's, it's all up to the most high. You know, who wakes up, who don't, or what you have and what you don't. And more times than not, I find when, you, when you're more content with what you have is, the more likely that the Most High will bless you and multiply you with even more. Let's get Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 30. The book of Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 30. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. Envy is the rottenness of the bones. Disgusting. That's such a, a wicked spirit. Because when you, when you envy someone, um, a lot of times that's where, you know, brothers and sisters end up taking somebody out because they envy them so bad that they want to beat them so bad that they want to just eliminate that person's existence. That's what envy does. But anyway, a sound heart is life of the flesh. A sound heart, man, a, a content heart. Um, I believe the word sound here is translated to, to healthy. You know, health, healing, cure, healing incurable profit all right what is this what else does it say um a mind of health healthy composed mind so that's that's how you choose life the more composed your mind is the more content you are the more you focus in on yourself and you're not absolving responsibility on the things that's happening in your life on on other people and other circumstances, the more, uh, you know, the more stable you're going to be in this walk, okay? So that's important. When it comes to keeping the commandments, all these things, they, they all go in together, okay? How we conduct ourselves, what, what our minds are thinking, all right? Let's get Matthew chapter 18 and verse 8. It's the book of Matthew chapter 18 and verse 8. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet and be cast into everlasting fire. Wow. So you how I say your cutoff game got to be strong. OK. And, you know, guess what? This could include brothers and sisters that's in the knowledge with you, too. That, that's a possibility. And that's just reality. Um, because we we not exempt from any of these scriptures. Matthew 18 didn't stop applying to us, you know, once we got in this thing, because none of us have made it yet. All right. We we don't know if we are part of the number or not. And we, we don't even want to approach it like that. We gotta approach it like the scriptures say in fear and trembling. Okay. But you know, also people be referring to a, a friend or a, a family member that you have to cast away. All right. I mean, you got to be willing to do that to your own mama, your, your own daddy or, or something like that if it applies. I'm just being real right now. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but it's all good. That's, that's choosing life. 
Okay, as Moses instructed us, let's see verse nine. Verse nine, and if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast in hell fire. So what Yahweh is saying here is that if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. So this is referring to your actual eye. If it start irritating you a little bit, and get a little red, you just pluck that thing out. Obviously not. But it's referring to anything that you have in your life, you know, a, a spirit that you know that you got on you. All right. Again, somebody else that you know um, that, that's close to you in whatever fashion or whatever it is, if you need to pluck it out or get rid of it so that you can get right on your walk, then you got to be able to do that. All right, because it's better to enter in without that that member, you know, enter into life with that one eye rather than keeping everything and to be cast into hellfire. Because again, you know, <clears throat> this still applies to us. Okay, it still applies to us. Now let's get the next verse here. Let's get, let me get that. Sirach chapter 30 and verse 17. Book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 17. Death is better than a bitter life or continual sickness. Now, we, we had talked about this before. Um, but, you know, we're talking about choosing life. So I wanted to include this here really quickly. Um, death is better than a bitter life or a continual sickness. So, you know, what we eat and things of that nature, what we drink, this all goes into choosing life. It really does because it affects your performance. It affects your thoughts. And it's just like sleep. You know, it's, it's crazy. Like nowadays I can even, like I can tell, like based on how much sleep I have, based on, I mean, uh, based on how much sleep I have, uh, my performance, you know, while I'm working the next day, it's like one-on-one -on -one and different things that you eat, you know, how much water you consume. That's also choose a life. It's something that we do every day, Lord willing, you know, except we're, we're fasting or, or something to that extent. So it's the daily process. So it's something that we can't just ignore. All right. But it's, it, nobody's perfect. I'm not saying all this to say that, you know, this is something we're going to perfect tonight, tomorrow, next year, in the next 10 years even, or ever in your life. No matter if you live to be 120, but it's something that we want to, you know, be aware of and, and work on to the best of our abilities so we can serve the most high to the best of our abilities. And we, we be able to choose life even here in the flesh. Let's get Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. It's the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And that knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we, than we believed. So now it's time to choose life, all right? Like the scripture says, you know, we have to make haste. Got to make haste. And again, what does that mean? What does make haste mean? It means that you have to do, you know, the, the best that you can do is as fast as possible. Maybe for you that that might mean just, you know, deleting a contact out your phone to somebody that, you know, you don't need to talk to that's quote unquote toxic. Okay. That could be deleting an app off your phone. It can be not going somewhere this weekend that you, you plan on going to, but you know, you really don't need to be there. Whatever it is, that's, that's making haste and delaying not to keep in our commandments. Um, but it, it's high time that we choose life. Okay, because our salvation is nearer than what we believe. Because this world, man, or this life is short. It really is. This life is short. And before we, we know it, you know, this thing going to be over. And it's going to be time for the judgment. We're going to talk about that in a second when we start talking about, you know, the second life. Right now, we're still talking about the flesh. Let's get Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 29. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 29. Say not, I will do to, so like, so like it, say not, I will do so to him as he have done to me. 
I will render to the man according to his works. So that's why you can't play tip for tat. You can't treat other people based on how they treat you because our judgment is not going to be based on what other people do to us. So say not, I will do so to him as he hath done to me. I will render to every, well, so I can, I will render to the man according to his work. So let's, let's actually, let's go back and read Deuteronomy chapter 30, uh, 30 again, uh, verse 19, one more time. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So us and our seed may live. So we may all choose life. Okay, these words, this is life or death now. It really is in the flesh and in the kingdom. Okay, so it determines everything. Let's get Second Edgar's chapter 20, so I can get chapter 7, verse 20. And we're going to talk about, you know, what Moses was really talking about in Deuteronomy chapter 30. Because uh, now we're about to talk about the kingdom, all right, eternal life, not just life here in the flesh. Let's get verse 20. It's the book of Second Edgar's chapter 7 and verse 20. For there be many that perish in this life, but they despise the law of the Most High that it is set before them. So if you despise the law, you choose in death. You only can choose life or you can only choose death. Again, now we know of times where a man or a woman has committed fornication in a form of adultery. And that judgment was swift upon them. All right. And sometimes we know, like in Ecclesiastes, the eighth chapter, if I'm not mistaken, that sometimes judgment isn't swift to the wicked. But again, what does it really matter if you still end up in the same place? All right, yeah, you live 30 years longer after that, but when it came to eternal life, you were denied because of that transgression, okay? Or for despising the law of the most high, even worse, okay? So that's how you perish in this life and in the next. Matter of fact, let's, um, before we go back here to um, second Edges chapter seven, let's get Romans chapter six and verse 23 real quick. The book of Romans chapter six and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of the most high is eternal life through Yahweh Shah Mashiach, our Lord. Well, the wages of sin is death, okay? But the gift of the Most High is eternal life through Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, okay? So this is double fold again. You know, when you work iniquity in this world, you know, different things that we talked about too as well, you know, your, your tongue, um, everything else that, that goes into this righteous walk, you can end up with, with punishment of death you know, here in the flesh, but also in the second death, same thing. All right, so the wages of sin is death. <clears throat> it always equals death no matter what. All right, but the gift of the most high is eternal life. So we need to choose life. I believe this is verse 59 we need to get in second address. Yeah, let's get verse 59. Chapter seven up. Chapter seven up, when you pull it the book of second Ezra, chapter seven and verse 59. For this is the life whereof Moses spake unto the people while he lived, saying, choose the life that thou mayest live. So that's the life that Moses was referring to, the eternal life, okay? Not just living in, okay? But once everything is said and done, you know, after the judgment, the eternal life being granted the kingdom, that's what it's really all about, man. Again, this, this life is short. And it's really just us building up a testimony for eternal life. That's all it really is, to be honest. That's why you can't take things really too serious in, in this life. Because at the end of the day, this is all that's, that's going to matter. Only the most high in his word and his elect is going to stand. That's it. Okay, Everything else is going to crumble and fall. 
you know, all the buildings, all the infrastructure, you know, the so-called white man's kingdom, all this wicked wickedness and nonsense, it's all going to perish, man. Let's get James chapter 4 and verse 14. The book of James chapter 4 and verse 14. Whereas ye know not, it's like it, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It, it is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanished away. Yeah, it's, it's like it's just like a vapor, man. You know, and Job talked about that, I believe, in, in Job chapter 14, if I'm not mistaken. But what is your life? It's even a vapor that appeared for a little time and vanished away. Let's get verse 15. Verse 15, for that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. Mm -hmm. Let's get verse 16. But now ye rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is evil. Wow, so the brother was bringing this out, how you have to say Lord willing, because it's only up to the Lord's will that you live or you die. It's all up to the most high. We just gave judgment unto his son. Let's get verse 17. Verse 17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. It is sin. It's like it. Kind of, which means it's death because of the wages of sin is death. Okay, so if you know that you're supposed to keep the statute of laws, commandments, and you don't, it's sin, which equals death. And we're supposed to choose life, man. Or at least if you, you plan on being in a kingdom or you, you aspire to be in the kingdom, Lord willing, then you have to choose life. All right. Let's get Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 19. It's the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 19. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts, even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man have no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. All this is vanity. All right, just how man fall, beast fall. Let's get verse 20. Verse 20. And go unto one place, all, of, all are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. So we were made from the dust, we're made from the ground, and we returned to the ground, all going to one place. So you, you go back to the most high, by the way, when you die, you go back to the most high, all going to one place, okay, all of the dust and turn the dust again, okay? You don't, you don't come back on earth and different things in nature. You, you go back to the most high, but let's give verse 21. Verse 21. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? The most high. And verse 22. Verse 22. Wherefore, I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? So the point of me going here in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 19, verse uh, through verse 22, is to say this life is all vanity, man. And when it's over, all that's going to matter is if we chose life or if we chose death. It's everything is going to come to a halt either way. Let's get Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. It's the book of Hebrews chapter 9. In verse 27, and it's like you, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So it was appointed unto men to, to die once. Okay, you only get one shot at this thing. Okay, you don't come back as a butterfly, you don't even come back as another man. Um, you know, you come back as Bob or something like that. You no, know, you, you only get one shot at this thing. And after that, it's the judgment. So we got to choose life, huh? Why wouldn't we? Because this, this thing is going to end no matter what we do. The most high words, they got to come to pass either way. 
So why not strive for the kingdom? Like in Sirach chapter four, strive for the truth and to death. Let's get wisdom of Solomon chapter eight and verse 13. It's the book of wisdom of Solomon chapter eight and verse 13. Moreover, by the means of her, I shall obtain immortality and leave behind me an everlasting memorial to them that come after me. So that's, that's through wisdom. That's how you obtain immortality and leave behind me everlasting memorial to them that come after me. It can only be done through the, this word. That's it. That's the only thing that's going to be eternal. Everything else is going to fade away like a vapor. All right, let's get John chapter 5 and verse 39. It's the book of John chapter 5 and verse 39. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. It's only in the scriptures, man. That's how you choose life, like Moses told us to do. And they are they which testify of me. So we are here to, to build up our testimony and follow your Havashah, man. That's all we really can do. Or at least if we, again, if we want to obtain a kingdom. All right, let's get Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. Book of Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy the both the soul and the body in hell. All right, so again, you know, Choosing life or choosing death. The Most High has that decision. Okay. Nobody here can kill your soul, even if they kill the body. The Most High makes that decision. So while we're here, we got to choose life. And let's get John chapter 12 and verse 25. The book of John chapter 12 and verse 25. He that loveth his life, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto, it unto life eternal. So he that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So what does that mean to hate your life or to lose your life? It's referring to your cares of this world, where you put your spirit into it's not about, it's not as much of what you have, it's how you look at what you have. For example, most people, at least most adults, don't have smartphones, okay, or some type of phone, cellular device, per se. Now, that, that same phone can be an idol to one person, and to the other person, it's, it's, only, it's literally only a means to do what it's supposed to do. All right, to call, text, even read the word or whatever it is for work. But for somebody else, that thing could be everything. So it could be an idol. So that's how you hate your life. That's how you lose your life. Again, not referring to literally, because um, you know, you're supposed to set goals. There's nothing wrong with setting goals. There's nothing wrong with even having nice things so it's not about that but your spirit can't be in them and you have to know that you know if it come down to it and you lose that thing and it is what it is all right yeah how should i come back then you like well no nah, let me let me wash my bins off real quick or, or something like that and look i ain't saying nothing wrong with having the bins i just threw out a random vehicle so i ain't saying nothing wrong with that um but i'm just saying you know, you, you can't hold on to these things, all right, from a standpoint of, you know, loving that more than the word, you putting that thing on a pedestal, whatever it is, okay, it can be another person, too, that you love more than the most high, whatever it is, that's what it, it means here to, you know, to hate this life, all right, and to lose it, um, so, Man, I'm I'm mad early. Normally I can't stop talking and I'll be running everybody over, but this is one of my, my shortest lessons here. Brothers got any precepts or anything they want to add? 
Con, I got one out. Let's do it. Can I get uh the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, and verse 21 and 22? All right. This is a book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, and verse 21. But if the wicked will turn away, so I give, but if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed and keep all my statues and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. So like you. So if the wicked, you know, keep these laws, statutes, and commandments, you know, do what's lawful and right, then he shall not die. He shall surely live as you were going into, you know? Verse 22, all his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Con, so his sins that he hath committed shall not be mentioned, you know, going into that day of judgment. His righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. His life in these laws, statutes, and commandments, as you were saying, bro. Absolutely. I'll pray this kind. Um, we can go into the kingdom real quick because I was talking so much about, you know, just choosing life in general. We didn't go into, you know, the actual fruits of, of their labor. We can get verse 18 uh, in Daniel chapter 7. God, the book of Daniel chapter 7 and verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So that's the everlasting kingdom. All right, that's choosing life. That's what Moses was referring to. Because we know that in Second Edges chapter 14 that you know, the Most High gave Moses you know, the secrets of prophecy. So he already understood that. All right, that's what he was telling our people. And that's why he said, you see it after you because he knew about the kingdom, okay? And he knew that, that that was the reward of choosing life, of keeping the statute laws and commandments. Okay, and let's get, let's get verse uh, 27. Verse 27, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Hey, that's why I said that in the, in the intro, man. If you're a heathen, the Bible for you is a way to understand how to become the best slave that you possibly can be. Okay? Shalom. So, uh, Tom. Let me, uh, can I get Matthew chapter 16? Uh, verse 25 on down i can't remember if you brought that out brother i could be mistaken but it's just going into everything that that, that you know what i'm saying that you mentioned um and you know shoot i let i let you know the brother bring bring it out and um of course you can break it down eloquently like you already have Con, it's the book of matthew chapter 16 and verse 25 for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will, will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Hey, I, you can break it down too. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll break it down for sure, man. You know, um, you know, the brother really, you know, had already brought this out um, in John. Um, but I, I felt like, you know, the account that we have from Matthew kind of broke it down a little more in depth. Um, but you got to lose this life for the most high, man. You know, um, and, and, and that, involve, that involves everything that the brother mentioned, you know, whether it's cutting off a, um, a family member or a friend, you know, um, you know, maybe someone you, you've known for a long time or, you know, canceling that application, that app, deleting the contact, you know, that's what this comes with, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough pill to swallow, but that's what it comes with, read on. Verse 26, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul yeah and the brother mentioned again man you know all this stuff gonna fade away one day and it's not gonna mean a hill of beans your money you know your friends you know uh, the relationships you built built your business your job it does nothing for a man to 
um, gain the whole world and lose his soul. Read on. Verse 27, for the son of man shall come in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Same thing that the brother mentioned in the lesson. You know, you're going to be rewarded for your works, man. Did you choose life? Right? Or did you choose the other path, the death, you know, the, 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 the wide path, right, that everyone else is on? Or did you choose the narrow path that comes with, Lord willing, a chance at the kingdom? Last verse, verse 28. Verse 28. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Right, man. So, and that's what we're striving for. That's what we're striving for. I yield. Beautiful breakdown. I'm glad that you brought that out. We needed that again for sure. Um, A lot. Con. Um, let me get Psalms chapter 98, verses 1 through 3. The book of Psalms, chapter 98, in verse 1. O oh, sing unto the Most High a new song, for he have done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. So everything that our, our God does is a mar 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 marvelous thing. The the vi vi victory we, we, we will have being making it to, to the kingdom, Lord, Lord willing, comes from his right right hand which we know is yahweh read on verse two the most high have have made known his salvation his righteousness has he openly showed in the sight of the heathen so the most high has made known his sa 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 salvation we have everything that we need in this book what once more we have everything that we need in this book here um the the right right righteousness that that he shows um comes from us wait wait waking up following the, the these laws keeping faith doing everything necessary to bring forth the the new and to get rid of of the old read verse three he hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our power. And that everlasting kingdom comes only by the mer 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 mercy and the truth that the mo mo most high shows toward towards us. And I you. Con, absolutely. We need that as well. I appreciate that. Um, you know, I, I thought of some more scriptures, but we could keep firing all night. I think we, we all made the point here. This word, you know, how you apply it is life or death. Not just in the flesh, but in our hopes to obtain the kingdom. So we have to take this thing serious. We have to apply as much as we can, as soon as we can. You know, killing an old man, making sure that, that he doesn't resurrect at all because there's, there's no rest for the wicked now. All right. The, the, the old man got to be a part of second death. He gone. Ain't no resurrection for the wicked. OK. And, and everything else, when it, you know, when it comes to, you know, obtaining the kingdom and having this righteous path. So you know, with that. I bid everyone peace and blessings and shalom.